I belong to the Technology Partners Foundation, which is non-for-profit private uh, RTO organization, as well as to the Warsaw University of Technology Faculty of Material Science and Engineering. And the results of our studies uh, are implemented in the small company in Poland, which is called TMBK Partners. Okay, so I will start with a short explanation why we need to improve the conductivity of carbon fiber reinforced polymers. Although the carbon fibers are conductive, still in many applications the conductivity of the composite is not sufficient. Uh, for instance, in su such applications like uh, EME shielding or lightning strike protection. Uh, that's why a lot of work is still done on the improvement of electrical conductivity by the application of also different fillers, but the application of fillers uh, usually decreases the mechanical properties of composites. So, among different fillers, uh, carbon nanotubes seem to be very attractive because they can improve the electrical conductivity with the much lower concentration of the filler in comparison to uh, commonly used fillers like uh, carbon black. Uh, moreover, uh, carbon nanotubes possess very good mechanical properties, which, what, what makes them very attractive in aero industry for the improvement of electrical and mechanical uh, properties uh, of not only secondary structures, but also primary structures. Uh, carbon nanotubes also possess quite good electrical conductivity, not as good as metals, but they have a, a high aspect ratio, uh, what makes the uh, possibility of creation the percolation thresholds uh, between the uh, carbon fibers. Uh, okay, so there are different routes, routes for uh, introduction of carbon nanotubes into the composite materials. I've started my interest in this uh, application of carbon nanotubes in 2009 with the project supported by Airbus. And in this project, we were working on the doping of neat epoxy resins. However, the um, carbon nanotubes uh, increases, uh, carbon nanotubes uh, increase the uh, viscosity of the material. So it is not possible to uh, fabricate composite materials with long fibers, with fabrics, uh, using the uh, liquid with uh, very high viscosity. Moreover, the filtration of uh, carbon nanotubes occurs in the infusion or in the RTM processes. So, later we have started studies uh, and other ways on, of introduction of carbon nanotubes to the composite materials. And I was working uh, with a group of people within electrical and series two projects. Uh, both are, uh, were uh, projects founded by European Union in which uh, three different technologies uh, were developed. One was uh, the uh, application of uh, carbon uh, nanotubes uh, on the carbon uh, prepex. The second one is the development of thermoplastic fibers and veils dubbed with uh, carbon nanotubes. And the third one is uh, CNT Bucky. Uh, papers and those three technologies currently are uh, developed within project platform and my group is responsible for the development of thermoplastic veils dubbed with carbon nanotubes. You can see just a short explanation uh, about the platform project. There are three pilot plants, one is located in, Sp in Spain. Uh, and the Bucky papers are currently produced in San Sebastian. Um, the CNT dubbed preprex are produced uh, in um, Italy, uh, in Patras, and my group is located in Warsaw, in Poland, and uh, we are working on development uh, of CNT dubbed veils in a, on a large scale, so we have to uh, create a pilot plant. 
Okay, first a short explanation what is uh, thermoplastic veil. Uh, the veil is the non-woven with a very low, let's say, aerial weight from 6 uh, up to 20 uh, gram per square, square meter and is usually used for the improvement of mechanical properties uh, of composites. It's placed between the layers of fabrics uh, or sometimes on the top of the material for the surface finishing. Currently present veils on the market are non-doped with carbon nanotubes. So we decided to dop this uh, material with uh, carbon nanotubes to have the uh, both in one. Uh, the improvement of mechanical properties as well the improvement of electrical conductivity. Uh, and uh, here you can see some requirements for the material, thermoplastic material, which is used, uh, or generally speaking, for the veil. Uh, that is low melting point because um, uh, the uh, veil is placed between the fabrics and then uh, usually RTM or infusion of the uh, liquid epoxy resin is uh, done. Uh, so this should be melted during the curing of the composite, not, uh, not uh, before the, 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 the curing, not during the infusion. Uh, it should be compatible with epoxy resin. It should also uh, be easy in handling and not affect the, the fabrication process of composite materials. Uh, and it should possess also uh, high uh, production capacity. Uh, so we developed two approaches uh, for the fabrication of thermoplastic doped veils. The first was done uh, at the level of the university. Uh, the fibers were uh, doped with carbon nanotubes were extruded uh, from master batches. Uh, then they were cut and pressed in the form of veils using uh, thermopress. Why thermopress? We didn't want to use any, any binders, any additives, because aero partners from the project said no. No additive because they will affect the uh, uh, fabrication process of composite parts. So that's why we, we use the uh, thermal process for binding the fibers. Uh, and the composites, as you can, you can see, were successfully uh, fabricated with the infusion process. You can see the, in the end, uh, the SEM structure of the uh, composite material through the thickness of the material and the distribution of carbon nanotubes. As you can see, we loaded uh, quite high number of, uh, large number of uh, carbon nanotubes, seven weight percent uh, to the fibers. And in this project, we are working with multiple carbon nanotubes. I will show you la later uh, the results from single wall carbon nanotubes supplied uh, by Oxial. And so we improved the conductivity of composite material in Z direction, what means through the thickness of the material, uh, more than 300%. So it was quite good result. Uh, but uh, the production capacity using this two-step process was quite low, so we decided to change the technology for the melt-blown process which uh, allows uh, the fabrication of uh, veils in one step process. Uh, when you have the melt in the end of the extruder, uh, the hot air is applied. Uh, with with um, this hot air, it is possible to uh, produce short fibers uh, that are quenched and collected on the transport belt. Uh, and uh, in this technology, we also use master batches, but uh, with a much lower concentration of carbon nanotubes because of the um, demandings of the process. Uh, the viscosity with the uh, addition of carbon nanotubes sometimes seems to be too high for the melt blow of the melt uh, in this process. 
And here you can see the pilot plant. Uh, in, in this pilot plant, we successfully produced uh, uh, veils with uh, parameters you can see here. Uh, we also uh, measure the uh, dimension of uh, fibers, the uh, distribution of uh, carbon nanotubes inside the, the, the fibers. You can see that the distribution is quite well. This is the photo in the end of this uh, slide. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the carbon nanotubes are, are oriented in the fibers, what is not so good for electrical conductivity. And uh, when we produced also the panels with the application of uh, our veils, they were placed uh, between each uh, layer of carbon fabrics. Uh, we obtained also the improvement of electrical conductivity, but not as high as it was previously. Why? Because of the lower concentration of carbon nanotubes. In this case, we were we had only 2.5 to 8% of carbon nanotubes. But still, uh, comparing to the reference panel, this is 16 times more uh, higher conductivity in the Z direction uh, in composite material. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, now I would like to show you uh, very preliminary results uh, of our studies on uh, different uh, oxial uh, products. We tested the uh, epoxy resin doped with tubal uh, matrix system. Uh, we, we produced from tubal paper the um, master batches with different concentration of uh, carbon nanotubes, starting from 0 0.5 up to 2.5 weight percent uh, of single wall carbon nanotubes, tubal single wall. Uh, and we successfully produced the veil with 1% of uh, uh, tubal uh, carbon nanotubes. Uh, and we use also the tubal paper, which was placed uh, on top of the um, layer of uh, laminate fabricate with the out of autoclave metal. And I would like to show you some of the results. Uh, the electrical conductivity of the uh, master batches, you can see in the table on the right. Uh, it seems that the percolation threshold is somewhere between 1.5 and 2.5 in our materials. Please note that we use the special grade of copolyamide to produce uh, the thermoplastic veils. Uh, and uh, what is not good, the um, viscosity uh, is uh, higher when we compare to the even higher amount of multi-wall carbon nanotubes. This is the reason why we uh, would not be able to produce, up to now of course, we were, be not able to pro were not be able to produce the veils with the concentration 2.5 single wall carbon nanotubes. Uh, hopefully, we will do it in the future, uh, and next time maybe I will show you results uh, with uh, higher amount of carbon nanotubes. Okay, so to conclude, I would like to say that we are able to produce materials that, uh, let's say, that are intermediate product for the improvement of electrical conductivity or con of carbon fiber reinforced polymers. And we are still looking for the conductive uh, filler, conductive carbon nanotubes that uh, will allow us to have higher uh, value of electrical conductivity and allow us, of course, to produce successfully the veil, what means uh, higher uh, electrical conductivity and not higher viscosity of the melt. And I think that tubal single wall carbon nanotubes uh, are very promising and we are still going to continue uh, our research with this material. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, please, questions? Uh, 
maybe it's not a question but a remark. I'm convinced that concentration of two ball is too high and it's quite natural that you have a, a problem uh, with viscosity. Did you make attempts to go to lower, lower, lower loading, not higher but lower? Because yeah. it's uh, absolutely, it's almost impossible to make a, a high quality dispersion uh, with the concentration of single wall carbonate use. No, 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 this is not the problem of the dispersion. The dispersion is quite good, as you saw on this uh, TM image. Uh, because the dispersion is good, the viscosity increases. Yes. Uh, why we need so high amount of carbon nanotubes? Because when you place the veil between the carbon fabrics, the conductive bridges are created between the fabrics. So the conductivity of the material should be really good to create really conductive path between the fabrics. So that's why, as, uh, as you saw, with 7 weight percent, the, we, we obtained a huge improvement of electrical conductivity in that direction. So that's why we need a, a huge amount of carbon nanotubes and uh, we are working on uh, different grades of material to have uh, very low viscosity of copolyamide and with additives to decreasing the viscosity to allow us to have the material with high concentration of carbon nanotubes and good processability. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, question, please. Uh, uh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Vladimir Saik, Excel. Have you ever tried to use doping of carbon nanotubes? Uh, Which one? Uh, did you try to use uh, uh, doped nanotube, like P-type doping oh, or yeah. N-type? No, 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 no. Like, uh, like this, not. Uh, we used only carbon nanotubes modified with functional groups, with amino groups, but the conductivity was even lower because of the um, deterioration of the, of the surface of carbon nanotubes. So I don't think that this is a good direction, but yeah, we can try. Functionalization obviously is not a good direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've tried to put also metallic cover, uh, nickel phosphorus coatings on carbon nanotubes, but with this process, we use ultrasounds, what cut uh, carbon, uh, uh, carbon nanotubes to shorter one and also decreases the electrical conductivity. Thank you very much.